Hi everybody, Ben here. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of V-Ray rendering within Clara.io. So I've got a simple scene here, a bunny um, and a background plane. And um, if you want to render this, uh, just click in to uh, this button here, Cloud Render, and then select Fast Preview if you want progressive rendering. It then will automatically set up V-Ray for you, including um, the V-Ray render and also the default pass. It also noticed that I had no lights in the scene, so it created a default three-point lighting setup. Um, now, what happens here is it's created a camera, uh, and in this viewport here, I'm not using that camera. So I'm going to switch over to the camera the renderer is using. And now when I make my movements here, it will update automatically in the other viewport. Okay, so um, the next thing I want to do is get rid of these um, sort of um, the three-point lighting setup. I actually, uh, it's sort of ugly. So what we're going to do is instead, we're going to use the V-Ray area light. We're just going to take that area light, we're going to move it up, uh, up, and then we're going to move it forward a little bit. There we go. And we're going to turn it. And then we're going to um, set the intensity a bit higher. Let's try something like 10. Mm. 10 works. Okay. So we'll zoom back in and we'll hide this light so that we don't see it in the viewport. Okay. So there we have a very simple uh, lighting setup. The soft shadow from the area light is much more uh, visually attractive. So the other part, uh, so besides the progressive rendering, we've integrated all of V-Ray's materials, or nearly all of them. So uh, what we can do is we can pick V-Ray standard. And if you have the bunny selected, it automatically applies to the bunny. We can then from that set up emissive lighting. We can set up reflective lighting. We can um, make it transparent or refractive. Um, we can make it sort of a ward, which is more of a metallic type rendering. And we can change its opacity. It has all the uh, V-Ray material settings that you've come to expect. We also have other uh, standard V-Ray materials that we have, as we have car paint, we have bunk, um, and we have um, subsurface scattering, both the standard and the SS2 complex. But many times you're in a rush. Say you're setting up an architectural scene for rendering. You don't want to be tweaking every single material and finding texture maps for them. In that, for those situations, we created the Material Browser. And in creating this, we partnered with Entres D and flying architecture to get um, to make those viz maps available to you. So using a material browser is quite simple. You just can either visually just keep scrolling through all the materials, or you can type in um, search queries, and it automatically filters to the textures that have that. You can use the tags on the side to refine further. So let's make a wood. So we're just set this to the the bunny, and you can see right away it updates. And and with our live progressive uh, preview, you can see what it looks like. So a simple wood texture works. We can pick a glass or a diamond. So here's a diamond texture. This one takes a bit of time to refine because it's now doing the refractions through the bunny. We can pick a car paint. We have quite a few different car paints. This one is quite um, stark. We have nice, um, we can see the nice flakes in the, the texture there. Um, and there's lots of, of metals to choose from as well. So we can make a sort of a gold bunny. So that's our material browser. Um, and I'll let you explore the thousand materials that we have in there. Um, the other features that we have are things like dome lighting. So I can just click on dome light here. And it creates a hemisphere light. And that gives you a lot of uh, sort of an environmental presence or, or ambient light that's very realistic. Let's change it a bit from the blue to a lighter blue here. So it's not too harsh. Um, OK, let's take out our area light. Uh, many times when you're doing architectural rendering, um, you'll actually have fluorescent lights or light bulbs already in the scene. Um, now, you could take each of those and try and fit an area light to that. But another approach that you can do is you can just find that object in your scene. Say if it's a fluorescent light, it could be something like a rectangle or a box, such as here's a, a box. And let's just move over to the side and rotate it. Well, this could be your fluorescent light. Um, to turn it into a light, it's as simple as selecting that object and then selecting the mesh light button. This turns it into a V-Ray mesh light right away. And so now we're using a mesh light. Um, again, very easy to set up. And if you want to just see the effect of that, we can turn off our dome light just there. And now we're just seeing that one mesh light lighting your scene. One thing that happens uh, is if you start getting a very complex scene, you can start getting millions of polygons and vertices in that scene. That can get slow on the web browser. 
So what we've done is we've created a proxy system within V-Ray so that you can click any mesh you can convert it to a proxy. You come down here to convert to and you pick proxy bin mesh. What this does is it converts it to a box on in the viewport but it actually leaves the full resolution mesh in V-Ray so that when you're rendering you see the full details. So once we have this we can start replicating this and you'll notice it's now blue in the viewport so we can clone this a few times. And let's move these out of the way. One here, and we'll move the other one over here. So now we have three bunnies. We can select these three, and we can clone them again. And we're going to use copy clone, copy cloning. And let me select those three, and we'll move them back a bit. You can select all of them again. We can clone them again. So now we're going to have 12 bunnies. We'll zoom out a bit and then move these forward. Once you do the clone, you'll automatically be selecting the, um, the new um, objects, the ones you cloned. So there we go, and leaving them selected, we can then assign different materials to the different groups of bunnies. So we can make some made of tiles. We can make some others. We can maybe make these. I don't know. We can make some glass. We can make some others missive. Um, I think light might do it. Glow. No. Um, light. There we go. So we can make some lights. And there we go. So now we've got bin mesh proxies, mesh lights, um, a miss of materials with a fairly high polygon count. Um, and this way you can achieve polygon counts upwards of 10 million using bin proxy meshes. And with all these materials you can quite create uh, a quite nice scene. So I've been using the, um, the progressive rendering, but if you want to do high quality rendering, just come here, come here and click standard. Or if you don't want to see it actually render, you can click on render and you can go render current pass. That will start up a render on our servers um, to the size that you've uh, set inside your pass. So down here, you can set your pass sizes. And it will email you once it is complete. In this case, I'm doing a bucket render the size of the viewport here with high quality settings. We've exposed nearly all V-Ray features. Um, and those are available either through creating objects in the scene or on the V-Ray renderer itself. So you can control your, um, whether you have caustics, your environment maps for reflecting, reflect, and your uh, global illumination. You can even control your image sampling, um, the color mapping such as gamma, um, and whether it's going to be clamped. And you can also change the iterations for your uh, live rendering. So the other thing that we've done with this latest Vera release is we've made it possible to embed your scenes in web pages. And that's easy to do. So all you do to see how to do it is you come here to view. Now view is your scene in our galleries. And here's the last thumbnail that rendered. Um, it'll update to the latest thumbnail soon. But what you can do is you can click on this photorealistic tab. And as soon as you do this, it will connect to our servers and automatically start streaming that V-Ray render to you. And so you can now embed these in your web page to show off your renders as live renders rather than just static images. If you want to get that embed code, all you do is you click embed here and you say you want to have it as the V-Ray um, rendering type rather than WebGL. And then you can either take this URL here, here and pass it around or use the embed code here and put it into your web page that way. You can adjust the background colors and sizes here. So that's it for this update of V-Ray. Um, thanks for your time.